So what comes to your mind when you hear the word Antarctica? Most likely, cold, snow, ice, and penguins. <laughs> Yet, this is one of the least explored regions in the world that hides many strange and unique things. Check them out! You don't have to go to Antarctica to see this weird thing. All you need to do is open Google Earth and move to one of the southernmost islands of Antarctica, King George Island. Recently, internet users have noticed a large and pretty strange cave entrance there. Where does this wide, dark passage lead? People started making suggestions. It's the entrance to a secret base or some laboratory. This is the part of the spaceship that crashed there thousands of years ago. This is the door to the ancient city of Antarctica. Perhaps there's a giant rock mountain with an ancient cave beneath all this snow and ice. Well, there's some ideas. Users have calculated the approximate dimensions of this cave. It might be about 74 feet high and 250 feet wide. You could hide a Boeing passenger jet in there. Nature probably created this entrance. This is a logical explanation, but there are two strange factors. First, take a look at the foot of the mountain. It seems that there are steps there. They're dark in color, as if they're made of stone. And if you look closely, you can notice something similar to human footprints. Has anyone entered this cave? Or maybe someone is still living there now. The second oddity is the disappearance of the mysterious finding. For the first time, people noticed it in a Google Maps snap in 2007. Then the entrance disappeared. Then it reappeared a few years later. After that, it vanished. And in 2022, people saw it again. Perhaps old snow melts, a new layer falls, and then the wind blows it away and the cycle repeats. But the alleged steps leading deep into the cave make one doubt the natural origin of this tunnel. You can easily find the coordinates on the internet and visit the cave via Google Earth. You might see something there and tell the world. There's another strange thing people discovered with the help of Google Earth. In 2020, one user found a strange object that looked like a giant ship 100 miles off the coast of Antarctica. It was covered with ice and snow and lying on its side. It looked like a cruise ship. You could notice the windows, the deck, and the bridge. But not all people agreed with this. Some claimed it was a spaceship. Others said it was some kind of secret building. The user who first noticed the ship stated that its size was about 400 feet, which is the perfect length for a passenger vessel. But what is this ship doing in such a remote place in the middle of a glacier? How did it get here? Who was its captain? No one has found the answers to these questions yet. In 2016, people using Google Earth discovered a photo of an unknown sea monster floating off the coast of Antarctica. This creature resembled a giant squid with a length of about 200 feet. This is slightly shorter than three train cars. Just imagine this kraken swimming in Antarctica's dark icy waters and dragging to the bottom everything it meets on its way. Maybe it's the great and terrible Chulu, or one of its offspring. You will quickly notice this blood-red waterfall among Antarctica's endless, dazzling white landscapes. Don't worry, it's not blood. For many centuries, the waterfall has been painting snow in a bright red color. The stream flows straight out of a white iceberg. Let's look inside and find out what's happening there. Millions of years ago, there was a small crystal clear pond. But then a glacier formed around it. A thick layer of ice and snow blocks sunlight, heat, and oxygen access. For millennia, the reservoir remained in this cold vacuum. But at one point, the water made a hole in the icy wall and broke out. When this salty water comes into contact with oxygen, it immediately turns scarlet or rusty. Antarctica is the only place where you can find such a unique natural phenomenon. One of the driest places on Earth is located in Antarctica. It's one of the most lifeless deserts in the world, the McMurdo Dry Valleys. In this desert, you won't see the scorching sun, hot sand, and cacti. A desert means a place with a lack of precipitation and life. The McMurdo Dry Valleys meet these parameters. But this place is also unique for Antarctica, since you won't find glaciers there. 
Despite the frost, ice can't form in the desert because it hasn't rained for millions of years there. It also never snows. A strong wind coming from the mountains reaches speeds up to 200 miles per hour. It would be difficult for you to stay on your feet there. The wind is filled with moisture. It heats up and evaporates all the liquid and snow in the desert because of its high speed. Only dry air reaches the ground. But you can find several lakes there. They don't freeze, only thanks to the high concentration of salt. The water is so salty that large life forms can't develop there. But scientists have found microscopic organisms near the lakes. A comfortable abode with a gorgeous view of the Mediterranean Sea will serve as a perfect rain shelter. Well, this is what a real estate advertisement might have looked like for Neanderthals 100,000 years ago. Welcome to the weird and wonderful caves you could live in. Or not. Of course, back then, neither real estate and advertising had been invented yet. Never mind the fact that Neanderthals couldn't build houses and often lived in caves. Yet, one of those caves looks an awful lot like a residential building. It's situated inside a high limestone cape called the Rock of Gibraltar. If the Neanderthals had had an economy, the caves inside this rock would have cost a bundle. Navigators discovered it in 1907. They just spotted a big hole inside the fortified rock. For many years, scientists have studied this place and found some traces of Neanderthals. They discovered ancient tools in the cave and bones of old animals. But the coolest thing was, they found four caves inside the rock. It was like a residential complex. Neanderthals lived alongside neighbors and helped each other hunt and fish. They created feather decorations and painted abstract drawings on the walls. Imagine our ancient predecessors hanging out in these caves 100,000 years ago. And now, scientists hang out there and study the primeval past of Neanderthals in detail. At the end of 2021, archaeologists uncovered a gap inside one of the caves leading to an unknown tunnel. They crawled through this hole and opened a new space under the cave roof. This place has been closed off from the outside world for over 40,000 years. And it seems it was one of the most prestigious apartments in the entire mountain complex. It has high ceilings with ancient stalactites. The ruined stone curtains divided the apartment into several rooms. Scientists also found the remains of ancient animals and scratches on the walls. It seems that Neanderthals had never lived here, but they used to visit this place. Archaeologists found the shell of a sea snail called dog whelk. One of the Neanderthals brought it here for some reason. But the primary owners of this place were hyenas. These caves show that Neanderthals were closer to humans than to monkeys. They had a way of life and even some customs. There's still a lot of work ahead, and scientists hope to find new rooms inside this rock. Meanwhile, in 2003, archaeologists discovered another early dwelling on the Isle of Flores in Indonesia. Among the green jungle, they found a cave with ancient tools. At first, everyone thought the human ancestors lived here. But then, scientists discovered an unusual skeleton of an adult. A thorough analysis showed the skeleton belonged to a 30-year-old woman, 3.5 feet tall, just above the waist of an average adult. The woman's weight was equal to the weight of an adult shepherd. The skeleton didn't belong to Neanderthals or Australopithecines. It was a new unknown species, which scientists called Homo floresiensis, or simply the hobbit. Also, there were remains of unusual ancient animals in the cave. It was an elephant the size of a cow, some large storks, and giant rats. Archaeologists have found out that hobbits were not the owners of this place. The main inhabitants were the rats the size of a cat. Maybe they were fighting the hobbits. Some analysis shows that Homo florensiensis wasn't our direct ancestor. They were in a separate branch of evolution. The hobbit skeleton looks more like that of a monkey than of modern humans. In 2009, in the dense jungle of Vietnam, archaeologists discovered San Don, the largest cave in the world. If you go inside the cave and shout, you'll hear your echo a long time. In some places, the height of this cave reaches half the height of the Empire State Building. And the total area is larger than one central block of New York. Sun Don is one of the three caves in the Vietnamese jungle. Many intricate mazes connect these caves. Inside, you can find unique plants and trees that live separately from the outside world. 
it's a real underground jungle. In some places, you can find collapsed ceilings that let the sunlight in. Besides unusual trees and plants, ancient stalactites hang there. Some limestone deposits are more than 450 million years old. They were here even before dinosaurs appeared. There are also many rivers in the cave. Rainwater coming down from holes in the ceiling has formed them. Fast streams resemble slides in a water park. They lead to unknown underground labyrinths. Scientists have studied only a small part of all these caves. The next unusual cave is in New Zealand. Hundreds of thousands of fireflies live inside. Each of them glows with a blue light. Together, they light up the cave. It may seem to you that you're on another planet, but you can't stay there for a long time. Special air measuring devices are everywhere. Scientists monitor the level of carbon dioxide necessary for the normal existence of fireflies. These insects are sensitive to the environment. If there are many people in the cave, or they stay there too long, the park staff will ask them to leave the place. It's like you're literally stealing oxygen from the fireflies. We've seen some pretty amazing caves so far, but how about a scary one? We're going to the desert of Yemen's Almara province. What we're looking for is not a cave. It's just a black hole in the ground, right in the middle of the desert. It's big, the size of a basketball court. It's not its size that can scare you, but what's inside. Scientists are still not sure what it is. From the depths of this black abyss, a disgusting smell of rotten eggs constantly comes out. And sometimes, you can hear some strange, frightening sounds. The blackness of the giant hole in Yemen absorbs all the sun's rays, so you won't see what's there even with a powerful flashlight. People flew over this place by helicopter. They filmed using drones and the most powerful lenses, but they didn't catch anything except darkness. It looks like a big ink spot in the middle of golden sand. The locals are afraid to approach this place. They believe the cave leads to another dimension where evil creatures live. At the moment, the giant hole in Yemen is one of the most poorly studied and mysterious phenomenon of nature. How did it appear? How old is it? Where does it lead? Scientists are trying to find the answers to these questions. You've just reached your perfect spot on a deserted beach. It's so quiet here that you start to doze off. But as you open your eyes, you are shocked. Wait a minute. Is that an actual house that's just been washed up on the shore? It may sound like the beginning of a sci-fi novel, but not if you live near this beach in El Salvador. There's a mysteriously abandoned house there that looks as if it's just been washed ashore. How did this villa end up there? How long has it been here without anyone noticing it? This mysterious construction is 46 miles south of El Salvador's capital, San Salvador. Locals say the building used to be a hotel called Puerto Ventura. At the time it was built, its main attraction was the fact that it was really close to the sea. Unfortunately, the engineering behind it wasn't well planned out. All because locals didn't need any official permission to start the construction. The hotel was too close to the water and dangerously exposed to the elements. The Roman-style villa is now a mere 50 feet from the edge of the sea when the tide is low. It can only be accessed in the morning, because later, the tides fill the first floor with salt water. What's now left of the hotel looks like the ruins of a two-story house. The front part is very impressive, with Roman-type pillars. It also has wide windows on the second floor. You can still see parts of the iron structures and remains of what used to be the gateway to the second floor. There are some bleachers at the top of the building. They are sometimes used by tourists. More and more people are now browsing the area, taking photos, even though the building is obviously not safe for climbing. There's little information on how long it's been sitting in its current location, but some locals say it's been there for at least 20 years. It had remained a local secret for years, before it was discovered by a TikTok user in 2021. But that doesn't answer the question, how did the hotel end up in another location altogether? This is where things become a little fuzzy. While some locals say that the building was abandoned decades ago, others claim it was deserted after Hurricane Mitch hit the area back in 1998. Hurricane Mitch was one of the most dangerous weather phenomena to ever hit Central America. During the storm, 
the winds traveled at 178 miles per hour, and the hurricane itself lasted for about 15 hours. It was also the cause of a huge amount of rainfall, which resulted in floods and many dangerous landslides. Being built so close to the shoreline, the former hotel had little chance of surviving the extreme weather conditions. So, it must have been literally displaced. After sitting under the sun, you might start dreaming of some snowballs getting washed ashore. You know, to even out the temperature. I'm not kidding. This strange natural phenomenon did happen back in 2016. It resulted in about 11 miles of the coast of the Gulf of Ab in West Siberia getting covered with huge snowballs. Because of the low temperatures, small pieces of ice started to form in the water. Afterward, the wind and waves rolled them into giant snowballs. Some of them were the size of a tennis ball, but others were up to three feet wide. A 2004 Harley-Davidson night train motorcycle popped up ashore on a British Columbia beach back in 2012. It was neatly packed inside a shipping container. It took some time to do it, but the owner was eventually traced down. His name was Ikuyo Yokoyama, and he lost his motorcycle after a tsunami struck Japan on March 11, 2011. To get to its final destination, the Harley-Davidson traveled more than 4,000 miles. To celebrate its long journey, Yokoyama donated the bike to the Harley-Davidson Museum in Milwaukee. It's been on display there ever since, in case you want to visit. This strange phenomenon made it look as if someone spilled dish soap all over the beach. But it does happen pretty often in Queensland. Sea foam covers the shore there a couple of times each year. It mostly happens after a storm, when ocean waves move dissolved organic matter around. It's basically like a giant ice cream maker. After Cyclone Debbie back in March of 2017, some beaches actually needed to be closed because of huge amounts of white foam. The wind even brought some of that foam to the nearby towns, making locals believe it was snowing. Would you be surprised to see a 6 by 6 foot rusty metal die washed ashore on your local beach? Because back in 2017, people in Coeur d'Alene in Idaho sure were. It turned out to be an old storage tank. Someone decided to spice it up a bit by adding some white spots to make it look like a dye. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.